Good afternoon, everyone. So we have here the new topic, which is on vertical distance um, measurement. So we all already done with the horizontal. So now let's focus on determining the vertical distances. So we are going to focus on the leveling. So this is only for the introductory part of the leveling. Uh, I'm going to discuss only the leveling principles and what are the operations in uh, leveling. Okay. So before uh, we are going to start with the proper discussion, I am going to uh, give you Muna the objective and then the topic outline of this uh, chapter. Okay, so at the end of this chapter or lecture, so you should be able to uh, define surveying terms associated with the leveling. And we have state the significance of uh, leveling. We have here identifying various classes of levels and leveling runs, and then enumerate the different leveling operations, and including the computed difference in elevation using differential uh, leveling. So we are going to have some computation on how difference in elevation or difference in height between points on the surface of the Earth is being determined uh, using the leveling uh, methods. Okay. So, um, these are the topic outline that we are going to focus on this chapter. So, we have, uh, again, definition of terms. We have significance of leveling operations. What are the types of levels? Uh, general classes of leveling rods or the leveling methods. And we have here computation for uh, differential leveling. So, let's start with the chapter one, which is uh, the topic one, which is on the definition of uh, terms. Okay, so for the definition we have the term, first term we have here the plumb line. So don't forget uh, plumb line. So this is a vertical line used which is perpendicular to the tangent line of a level surface. So don't forget that this is tangent to our level surface. Now, what is level surface? So wait for that. On the next, I am going to discuss what is a level surface. So again, when we say plumb line, this is a vertical line. So when you say if you are standing straight, then your plumb line is uh, directly to you. So vertical that is a vertical line uh, that is ano siya, parallel to the gravity of the Earth. So if you are standing, so therefore the plumb line covers at the center of your body, in which the center of the gravity. Uh, of the body okay so we have here the horizontal line to the horizon right so this is a straight line which is tangent to the level surface so when you say tangent for example this is the the curved surface of the earth when you say tangent if it touches at this certain point here it just becomes tangent so nagtatouch yung ating if this is the horizontal line so this then is the horizontal line and this is the form surface of the earth. So if that is the case, so nagtatouch siya. So that is what is a horizontal line. Nagtatangent siya sa ating level uh, surface. We have here the vertical datum. So this is the level surface that we are referring to. This is a surface to which our elevation or depth are referred. So, our vertical datum is do, dito yung makukuha yung ating, siya yung magsiserve ng reference ng ating uh, mga elevation or siya yung magiging reference ng ating uh, leveling survey. So, serve as a reference in determining the elevation or depth on the surface of the earth. We have, uh, there are two types of datum uh, in which uh, in reference, uh, we have the geoid. So this is a surface of constant potential energy that coincides with the mean sea level over the ocean. So if you have the picture of the Earth, and then if we took out all the waters, then land mass na lang siya. So in, because the Earth is not a perfect sphere, so naging sphere lang siya because of the water or the ocean. So if we take out all the oceans and the water along its body, then the remaining will be para siyang, uh, ano, para siyang nalatang potato, yung shape. So that is now called the geoid. Another, we have a reference ellipsoid. So 
So this is also in a uh, shape of the earth, but in ellipsoid. So one of the, uh, this was established by scientists and mathematicians. They create an imaginary surface of the earth in which pwede siyang magamit for in a purpose of computation. Because if we are going to rely on the true shape of the earth, it's very difficult since like to change yung kanya movement due to the gravity and maraming factors. So that's why they established this uh, theoretical or mathematical surface of the earth, which is called the ellipsoid, for the purpose of the computation. So computation ng elevation, height, the graphic position. So that is the purpose of why they create an imaginary or this theoretical or mathematical uh, shape of Earth. So this is called an ellipsoid. Okay. Okay, so another term is an orthometric height. So again, meron tayong level surface or yung um, mismo nagko-coincide sa ating geoid. Yung si geoid, yung true shape ng Earth, yung, yung mal, parang potato na, uh, na deform. Right? So when, if, uh, again, yung geoid is, uh, that is a reference to our elevation. So if our elevation is in reference to the level surface o yung ating geoid, so the height na may measure natin is called an orthometric height. So this is a geometrical distance between sa ating geoid hanggang doon sa point kung nasaan ka if you're going to to measure a certain point on the surface of the Earth. So to the point measured along the plumb line, passing through the point using different methods, it could be uh, leveling. So aside kay orthometric height, yung ating orthometric height is measured from the geoid, yung true shape na Earth. How about yung height na na-measured from the ellipsoid? So from the term itself, this is called ellipsoidal height or ellipsoidal elevation. So, hindi na siya from geoid, but doon siya nag-refer sa, uh, sa ating ellipsoidal surface. Yung ating imaginary or yung mathematical surface ng Earth, yung ginawa ng ating mga mathematician, yung uh, parang sphere, yung shape ng Earth. So, this ellipsoidal elevation, so this is the elevation referred to the reference ellipsoid. So, hindi na siya in reference sa geoid. So, when you say yung height in reference sa geoid, that is an orthometric height, and the one that is referred from the ellipsoid is called the ellipsoidal height or the ellipsoidal elevation. Okay? Take note of that. The difference between the two. Again, this one, this is what we are speaking to. Uh, we have the level surface. When I see a level surface, this is surface of every element which is normal to the plumb line. When I say normal, that creates a right angle, right? If this is the plumb line, I'm going to pen. So if this is the plumb line, uh, so, see, gagamitin natin tong illustration. So, if this is the plumb line of this surveyor, therefore, yung level surface niya is here. So, this is the level surface, and this is his plumb line. So, why we get this? Because this two creates a normal. So, if this is the plumb line, this is the center of the gravity of that man. So, kung center of the gravity siya, dumadaan yan, sa plumb line and that normal to that or perpendicular to that one is the level surface. So this is now your level surface, creating a right angle. Okay? So when used as a reference, so this is called na yung ating datum. So the geoid can be our level surface and the ellipsoidal uh, surface can be our level surface. So depends, it depends kung anong classing reference yung ating gagamitin. Okay, so when we say elevation, so we have we mentioned this several times. When you say elevation, this is a vertical distance of a point above or below an arbitrary or assumed level surface or a curved surface. So from the level surface, if this is the level surface and this is the point above the ground, so from zero like example, yung ating level of service ay zero yung elevation. 
and then if you this is the point on the surface of the earth so therefore the elevation is from here until this point okay i'm going to show uh, an illustration in which all of this element is being mentioned so para mas maklaro so on the next slide so we have difference in elevation so we have the two object has an elevation so you take the difference so that's it that's the difference in elevation we have another uh, the leveling so this is now the method that we are going to employ to determine the elevation of points and then determine the difference in elevation between uh, points so this is the operation of measuring the vertical distances either uh, directly or then indirectly because again we have the uh, i mentioned before we have the trigonometric leveling so in which you can determine the the vertical distance without uh, conducting or without uh, directly measuring the distance so you just use the computation to determine the differences in elevation so leveling is employed to determine if we're going to establish datum or if we are going to establish um, reference datum on the surface of the earth then we are going to employ uh, leveling so this is an example of a benchmark so when i say benchmark so this is a definite point of an object the elevation and location of which are known serve as a point reference or level so we uh, again if we have already a datum that we are going to use and then para may dahiya para ma observe natin ang iya datum or para magamitan natin datum magmamark kitang mga a specific point on the ground in which we already know the elevation and then we are going to establish this example so this is an example of a benchmark so usually yung ating mga benchmark is established by the us so what they did is they conducted uh, leveling to establish this uh, type of datum so this is called benchmark. So this benchmark, uh, this is available. Uh, you can see this one in your municipality. Usually, makikita so sa mga municipality in the plaza or in the municipal hall. And you can look for this one. So this, um, this control, operation control, this benchmark has an elevation. So it consists of an elevation. Naka-indicate yan sa mismong uh, mismo upper portion ng ng uh, I don't know if I can read the numbers. So we have here 13796 feet above mean sea level in which mean yung point na yan kung nasaan na locate yung control is 100 uh, 1000 ano, that's 13,796 feet from the main sea level or from the zero elevation which is located in the main sea level so you can locate this one on the bridges so so niya location and then naka indicate yung elevation para in in case if you are going to conduct a survey then we can just tie up or we can just take a back side of this um of this benchmark to determine the elevation of the points on our project. So, gagamitin natin here as reference. Okay, para siyang control in the horizontal. If we're going to establish a horizontal or mag-determine kita ng horizontal distances or pag nagka-traverse, ang hihimuon natin uh, reference is known as a control. But, kung nag-vertical distance measurement, pag nag-leveling, ang hihimuon natin ng uh, reference is called a benchmark. So you can assume your own value of benchmark if you don't have the data. So just determine kung gusto natin arbitrary or naka-fly lang natin points. So you can use assume. But if you really want to determine the specific or the elevation with respect to the mean C11, then you have to look for this kind of uh, uh, benchmark. So you need to look for this uh, benchmark. Okay, so I have here an illustration of, of what is really, what is plumb line, what is benchmark, what is level surface. So, um, 
uh, as you can see, this is the spherical earth. So, ito yung makikita nyo sa mga digital na mga, mga, mga apps, digital na mga images. So, this is what we see, uh, an image of the earth from a satellite. So, ganito yung hitsura niya. If we take out all the waters, then yung mariremain is the land mass. So, this is what the earth look like. So, this is the known as the geoid or yung true shape mismo ng earth. Now, uh, our, our uh, the past mathematicians, our ancestors, no, uh, they want to determine the location of the earth, exact, the exact location. But if we are going to refer to the geoid, so they have the problem with the creation of the, the geoid. So what they did is they established again the, a mathematical surface. So this is the theoretical surface of the earth in which madali lang natin ma-determine yung position ng points since nga naka, ano siya, naka spheroid. So we can compute the position using A and B, yung semi-major axis and the semi-minor uh, axis ng, uh, ng, ng ellipsoid. Then we can determine the position. So if we are going to combine this three, three surface of the earth, so we call this three as a uh, reference surface of earth. So let's say this is the ellipsoid and then we combine the three. So this is the actual or yung sphere na shape na earth. And then this is the, uh, the geoid. So let's delineate the boundary between the three. So this is again, this is the um, the ellipsoid, this is the spheroid, and then this is the, the blue one, the last one, that is our uh, geoid. So as you can see, at a certain point, nag -e intersect yung ating tatlong uh, shape ng Earth. So andito siya sa... <laughs> so... At a certain point on the surface of the Earth, there is a chances that these three uh, surfaces of the Earth or three shape of Earth will coincide. So, uh, if we look, if we take a zoom on this area. So, let's say this is the the actual na location, and then we are going to zoom in. What ha really happened on this specific point on the surface of the Earth? So, let's zoom into this. So this is the zoom in. Okay. So again, uh, this the red one is the mathematical surface or the ellipsoid. So let's label that one as the ellipsoid, and then the blue one is the yeah. So the blue one is our geoid, yung ating true shape ng Earth, in which yung ating level surface or yung tinatawag na datum is doon sa nagre reference. Again, yung ating orthometric height is measured from our geoid and that, and that is our level. Ito treat natin siya as level surface. Okay? So let's say we have two points. So let's say we have point here, which is point, let's say this is point A and then we have another point. On the opposite mountain, we have... Let's say this is point B. So we have two points. Now, if our concern is to determine the difference in elevation between points A and B with respect to the mean sea level, so when we say with respect to the mean sea level, for example, yung ating benchmark ay nandoon mismo sa zero elevation. So when we say mean sea level, yung elevation niya ay zero. So, mag-establish tayo ng benchmark. So let's have muna this one. So this yellow dashed line is called, if this is tangent to here, if this is perpendicular to this blue line, and this is perpendicular to this blue line, therefore that dashed yellow line is called the plumb line. Again, by definition, can you know, say plumb line that is a line that is a vertical line which is uh, 
perpendicular or normal to our level surface. So as you can see, the blue line, yung blue natin na line is the level surface. And then right angle siya, so that is the plumb line. Okay, so kung pag andito ka, let's say you are here. And then this is your plumb line. Let's say this is your plumb line. Then you create a right angle here, so that will become now your plumb line. Okay? So let's erase this here. Okay, let's move. So the, again, that is our plumb line. That is the plumb line for station B. So if we have a level surface on our uh, benchmark, therefore, we have also a level surface projected sa ating uh, point A. So when you say, pag may dakita level surface has zero elevation, let's say this is zero meters. Ininga di Let's say this is zero meter. Di ba kay zero man, adi ha may mean sea level. So our elevation is zero. So we have a level surface. So we can also create a level surface to our specific point, which is parallel kay atun level surface. So we have here another level surface for our point um, for our point A. So we have here our level surface. And then we have another, we can create another level surface for our point B. So this is just imaginary lang. So we have another point B. So if you have a point here, then you can create another level surface. So the level surface of our points on the surface of the earth is always parallel to the level surface. So this is our main level surface, which is the elevation is zero. So meron din siyang level surface dito. Then meron din siyang sariling level surface yung ating mga points on the surface na. Okay, so let's say we have a benchmark here. So nag-establish tayo ng benchmark. So let's say yung ating benchmark ay may elevation na zero meters. So let's just assume zero meters siya. Since andun naman siya sa main sea level. So sa zero elevation. So let's say how oh, that is our benchmark. Then if this is our benchmark, therefore this height from here to here is called the orthometric height of point A. Why? Because this is the level surface in which our geoid lies. Again, that when we say orthometric height, that is height measured from the geoid to the point. So this is the, the projection of the level surface ng point A. So ibig sabihin, itong from here to here is called the orthometric height or the elevation of point A. Yon. So that is now our elevation of point A. Now, how about B? How are we going, where are we going to draw the elevation of point B? So we are going to create another line. So this is now our elevation of point B in reference sa ating benchmark na zero yung elevation. So from the level surface until dun sa projection ng level surface of point B, that is now the elevation of point B. So that, that is measured from here to here. So that is also equal to here until here. So this is from this is the projection of the level surface of point B from this point. So that is now the elevation of point B. Okay. So this is level surface. And then this one is another level surface projected by point B. So that is the red line here is called the slope distance. Naka slope yan. And then the horizontal line is this one. This is the, the lighter red color. Nakikita nyo. So this is the horizontal line with respect to 
the horizon. So, our horizontal line is tangent. So, hindi siya masyadong na-clear. So, that is tangent to our level surface. So, this is our level surface. At this point here, naging tangent siya sa ating uh, tangent siya sa ating level surface, yung ating horizontal line. Again, if this is uh, this blue line here, from here, dito ay yung ating geoid o yung ating level surface. So, if you measure the, the orthometric height that is measured from here, so, orthometric height of point A that is measured from here until dito. And then, if we are going to determine the ellipsoidal height of point A, then we are going to measure from the ellipsoid here, from the ellipsoid until dito. So, this is now... The, the ellipsoidal height of point A. So with B naman, so from here until dito, that is the um, orthometric height of point B. And then from the ellipsoidal uh, surface, so to point B, so that is the the ellipsoidal height of point B. So, meron siyang konting difference yung ating ellipsoidal height and orthometric height. Okay? So, another term that we have to uh, discuss first, we have the turning point. So, this is now on the, on the methods of leveling na, na term. So, when we say turning point, so, this is an intervening point between two benchmarks. So, kung may benchmark dito and benchmark doon, in between points are called turning point. So, in which yung ating rad, kung saan natin ilalagay yung ating target o yung rad. Upon which point foresight and backside rad readings are taken. So, it's a nature usually indicated in the notes, but location is not necessary. So, uh, where our foresight and backside is being read. So, ma'am, what is foresight and backside? Okay. So, when we say a backside, I already mentioned this backside on the traverse, right? So, when we say a backside, so this is a red reading taken on a point of known elevation. So, as long as the elevation of a point is known, that is, we are going to read the readings that is a backside. So, this is usually taken with the level siding back along the line. So, this is called also the plus side. When you say uh, the back side kasi is madetermine natin elevation ng point if we add the back side. So, that's why this is known as the plus side. So, when you say a back side distance, so this is the horizontal distance from the level to run. So remember, yung ating rock site distance is the distance from the instrument center hanggang doon sa ating run. Okay? Another, we have foresight. So yung kanina, rock site, is if we target on, if we read or we target on a known. Opposite naman si foresight. So, if the foresight, if we take a rad reading on a point with a known elevation. So, pag a known naman yung elevation, then we are, that is known as a foresight. So, si foresight is always minus. So, this is also known as the minus side. So, similar din sa back side, meron din tayong kinatawag na foresight distance. So, this foresight distance this is the distance from the instrument center to the rod in which nagtitake ka ng foresight. So we have HI or height ng instrument. So the, if you are going to set up the instrument that is from the center of the telescope hanggang doon sa ating datum. Okay? So this is the elevation of the line of sight or from the center ng yung telescope above the datum. So if this is if you this is, if you establish the instrument here, so you have instrument and you have like say this is the zero elevation. So each eye is measured from the telescope or long in of sight hanging the own sa, sa datum. So that is our H I. 
Okay. So I have here an illustration. So what are what are those backside, foresight, turning point, ano pa yun? Backside distance, foresight distance, and HI. So let's say, so this is the scenario in which uh, leveling is being performed. So let's say we have a benchmark here. Let's say that is a benchmark one. And then we have another benchmark on top. That is, let's say that is benchmark uh, number two. So we put a rod on benchmark number one. And then we level the instrument here. So let's say closer to our benchmark. And our target is to determine the, the, the elevation of benchmark number two. So let's say meron tayong elevation. We already know the elevation of benchmark one. And we don't know what is the elevation of benchmark two. So what we are going to do is to run a leveling from benchmark 1 to benchmark 2. Okay. So, since we assume that benchmark 1 is known, so therefore, if we take a site on that benchmark 1, that is known as a back site. Since benchmark 1 is already known. And then, if we read that, can you read that one? That is 1 meter point eighty. Seven. As you can see, this is uh, one meter. This is one meter. And they have, hindi siya nakaabot ng two. Hanggang eight lang siya. And then, meron pa siyang konti naglagpas. So, so let's just say that is 0.7. So, the reading is 1.87. So, then, 1.87 na rad reading that is a backside to benchmark one. Again, why is it backside? Because yung benchmark one natin is assume na meron siyang elevation. So that is a backside. So when I say a backside distance, that is just the distance from your instrument to the leveling rod. So that is now a backside distance. Now, um, if we're going to observe benchmark 2, so kung sobra pang layo ng benchmark 2, then we have to establish several turning points. So if closer lang siya, pwede na siya direct na to mag-measure, then why not? But in sa, it is also already a practice na kung, kung malayo ang benchmark 2, then we cannot, hindi uh, na to ipupugos nga, di direct sa on tangan to pag, pagsasize sa benchmark 2. What we are going to do is we establish a turning point. So we so yung turning point natin is mga temporary lang sa na points na gagamitin nito natin para makadetermine natin bench ang elevation ng benchmark to. So create kitang point sa ground. Let's say that point certain point here and naka triangle and then we transfer the the rod. So you transfer the rod. And then, you observe that rod. So, that yellow line, that target is called the foresight. So, why is it the foresight? Because that is a turning point and we don't know the elevation of that point. So, we have no idea. So, that is now our foresight. Okay? So, from the telescope to the turning point or telescope to the foresight, that is our foresight distance. Again, it's turning point. And then from that point to our target, so that is our foresight distance. So what now? So sobrang layo pa ng benchmark number two. So what are we going to do next? So we have to transfer the instrument to the next point. So hindi yan, wala yung rule kung saan mo ilagay yung, yung, yung instrument. So as long as safe yung ground, hindi nagsisettle yung hindi, hindi siya soft, unstable yung run, then you can put the, the, the instrument there. Again, so you put the instrument on the next point. Again, you take a backside. So now, why is it backside na siya? Since we already did a foresight, nataga na natin hiyan elevation. So in a turning point, di rin niya unknown. But no na hiya because we already did a foresight kanina. 
So, maganda na niya elevation niya. So, what we all, the red we have here backside na because an old man hiyang a turning point. And next na nga turning point, amo nagihap ang nagiging foresight. Then, okay, proceed. So, another turning point. Then, take a foresight because bago man niya, the foresight. Tapos, transfer na naman ang instrument. Backside, foresight, transfer instrument. Uha kang turning point, backside, foresight. So, ang babalik ko nita again. We take a back sight, thus turning point, four sight, tapos transfer the instrument, back sight, tapos another turning point, four sight, transfer the instrument, then back sight, then four sight until mo ma-reach si benchmark number two. So how did it happen? How does the elevation was computed? So later, I'm going to show you how does the computation, how did we get the elevation of benchmark number two? Okay. So what is the significance of this leveling or leveling operation? First, it provides necessary data for engineering design, engineering construction, production of topographic maps, so, can you imagine uh, the cut and peel ito ng mga bukid niya ginaagian yung kalsada? So, can you imagine how they determine the amount of uh, the volume of soil to be cut and the volume of soil to be filled? So, what they did is determine, they conducted the uh, differential leveling or they determined the elevation of the of the route ng kalsada para ma-determine ang mga elevation ng Aaragian at kasada. So if they are going to determine, if they have the elevation, then ma-determinan nila nga an elevation ini is sobra kaataas, then we have to cut this portion of the mountain para makatraverse na natin road. Another is, uh, if you want to create a topographic map, if you want to, if you want to establish uh, buildings, you need to have the elevation. So, and there are several applications of this uh, leveling. We have site suitability analysis. Like say, for example, if you are going to create a, a big, a large subdivision or a large cities. So, hindi naman pwede ilagay natin yung ating subdivision or hindi pwede ilagay natin yung ating mga, mga cities na, na, na lower and elevation. So, what will happen? The, the flooding will occur. And then that area is not really suitable for development. So that is the one uh, use of leveling. We have proper design and laying out of vertical and horizontal control or vertical and horizontal uh, structures. So there are a lot of, actually there are a lot of, of applications and use of uh, leveling. So there are several types of level. But what we are really using now is the automatic level. So we have the dumpy level. So this one is the dumpy level. We have the automatic level we have here. And we have the tilting level. We have the laser, which is more advanced and costly. We have the digital. And we have the hand level. So kung pang estimate lang. So we have here, uh, this is the dumpy level. So. This is commonly uh, known as the engineer's level. So, para siyang, uh, this will indicate if naka-level na yung instrument. This is uh, level general through has been superseded by self-leveling instrument. So, known as the shorter level. So, meron siyang telescope na may magnifying power na 30 diameter. So, dito sa kanyang end. So, yung advantage lang ng dumpy level compared to the other level is uh, the weight and stability under the condition where vibration and wind render lighter automatic level less stable. Yung ating usual na ginagamit which is the automatic level is very handy, magaan. Yun nga, yung konting vibration o ng, like for example, if you are under the construction, tapos nagbabibrate yung, yung ground, it would really affect 
the reading of the vertical uh, distance. So, itong instrument na ito, yung dumpy, medyo mabigat siya. So, whatever happens, medyo stable siya on the ground. So, this is the actual, I think this is old type of instrument because I've seen this one when I was in, um, in my bachelor's pa. I've seen one in my in my school in VSU. I've seen one this. So we have the common, very common, and this is being used by uh, engineers and and projects. We have this is called a self leveling level. So like this is the same kind dumping level. Yung yung concept niya na meron siyang telescope and there is a circular lever to level the instrument in this this allows the establishment of horizontal line of sight by means of a uh, compensator so this compensator is para siyang prism inside that instrument which is supported by wires as the pendulum so the level niya yung yung mismong instrument so this is designed that the line of sight is horizontal so hindi itong level na to I have here at the back. So that this instrument is hindi siya, hindi siya the same yung ating total station na pwede siya isugad. Pwede na mo ano yung vertical telescope is pwede na mo i-incline or pwede na mo i-obos. So this automatic level is nakasugad lahi niya. Permanent niya na naka-horizontal. So that's it. So this is the image of the automatic level. So this is leveled using a circular uh, spirit or bull's eye level. So uh, can you uh, remember the total station na meron siyang level bayal? Similar din siya, meron siya ditong circular level here. So pag hindi naka-level yung instrument, yung circular level is hindi siya naka-center doon sa kanyang bubble. So dapat muna, before siya gamitin, it should be centered muna on the, on the circular uh, bubble. We have the advantage, main object of brandish ng instrument na to is magaan. So, easy to handle and the operation is quick and uh, accurate. So, these are the parts of a automatic level. We have here yung telescope niya. So, here we have the objective, so yung outer part ng telescope. Meron siya ditong pep site, similar kay total station. So, Makikita mo nga dahil yan yung target na rad. Through, if you're looking through the website, we have the focusing knob. So, pag hindi mo pa nakikita yung mo target, you can just turn the focusing knob para mag-lighter yung mo telescope para sa maklaro yung mga crosshair. So, we have also the eyepiece. So, nga da ka magkita. And then, mo kakita ko yung mo target. And we have the three plate. Similar kay total station, kailangan mo nga ito turn para ma-level ini nga ano, may circular bubble nga din. Para niya ma-level, you have to turn these three circular screws mga ha-iyakot para ma-level mo ang circular level. Okay? So, another instrument, we have the tilting. So, we have the tilting level. So, ang feature niya nga niya is meron siyang telescope na mounted in a transverse fulcrum. So, meron siyang uh, fulcrum dito sa gitna. It has a level bubble with a sensitivity of 10 seconds. Similar din man kay automatic level. So, equipped with coincidence bubble used for precise leveling. So, we have the advanced one which is the laser. So, commonly used in construction works to maintain the elevation needed. So, it saves time and effort. Yun nga lang, costly. So, the advantage of this laser is for layout and construction. And one button operation and fully automatic general construction. So, automatic na siya nag-earn nag or nag-kukuha nag and kukolect ng elevation. So, this is the good one but costly. We have another, which is the digital. So, hindi na ikaw yung bumabasa doon sa, sa magiging target. So, this one, since this is one is digital, it can 
uh, record na the elevation that you get. So, it aims the telescope at the star. Mas madali siyang gamitin. And then, automation operation eliminates conventional error by the operator. So, kaya rin mo na ipofocus. Focus pa ang telescope because direct na niya, i-record and makukuha niya nga elevation. Okay? We have the hand level. So, you just hold this one and then you determine, tapos meron siya ditong level vial. Meron siyang level tube na dapat isi-center mo siya. Kung na-center niya, level na. So, this is used by mga, mga carpenters and mga construction workers to determine if naka-level ang usang, uh, an, an usang uh, object. So, hindi siya pwedeng gamitin for precise leveling, pang instrument na. So, we have, this one is the accessories. So, we have the leveling guide. So, this leveling guide is the one we are going to target if you're going to use the automatic level. So, ito yung tinatarget natin. And then, we read these numbers na makikita mo sa body ng rod. So, these are uh, graduated wooden rods. It could be wood, made of wood. It could also be metal and or naka-iron plate. We have rectangular cross sections with difference in elevation is being measured. So there are some also aluminum alloy and fiberglass. So what we have here in EBSO is the one with aluminum. So the rod reading is indicated by the level's horizontal cross here. A measure of which vertical distance between the point on which the rod is held and the line outside. So if we look into the eyepiece of the automatic level, another makikita is like this, for example, may the circle, tapos may the niya cross here. So, tuloy niya cross here, we have the upper and the lower. So, what we are going to determine is the center in ining, uh, ining uh, middle rod reading. So, so, pag hindi po pahinga nakaklaro, you can adjust the focusing screw para magnify niya, para niya mag-zoom. So, mas nakakita mo ang iyang rod reading. Okay? So, we have also different types of uh, rod readings. We have self-reading self rods. We have the target rods. So, this one is an example of a target rods. So, using a target rods, the rod one uh, used to slide the target up and down until it's bisected by the line of sight. So this one, this circular one can be moved up and down until uh, kung ano yung nakikita ng instrument man is matatarget din ng, ng, ng target rod. So uh, the advantage this one is mistakes are less likely to occur since imumubo man, mas mababasa mo pa yung mo value kay may din niya small graduation. So, on the other rods, compared to the other rods kanina, so, wala hiyang, wala hiyang guti ay, guti ay ng mga graduation. So, this is used materially facilitate the work. So, under ordinary condition, it use retards progress without adding much precision. So, you can use this one. So, we have Philadelphia. So, this is the one that we have. We also have direct elevation uh, rod. So this is the image. I think this is a target, the target one, the target rod. So this is the image that you can see if we look into the telescope of the automatic level. Okay, so I guess that is the end of the part one. So the next presentation, I am going to discuss what are the methods of leveling and some uh, leveling computations as an application to what we have learned in part one. Okay, so see you in the next uh, video.